so after studying about the various norms which are there because we are see uh, till now we are working with the vectors only and uh, uh, in vectors what we have you can say uh, these are uh, kind of uh, we can also call them as the 1d matrix one dimensional arrays right so or a list of numbers which we are studying so when we talk about uh, the product of two vectors see when we talk about the various operations that we can, we can do on the two vectors like the addition of two vectors or the multiplication of two vectors then the dot product and the uh, cross product of two vectors then the scalar product of two vectors so we have different operations that can be do so what is the use of these operations see uh, algebraically or you can say mathematically we know how to compute when you know, some data is given to you we compute the dot product how do we compute the dot product see dot product or inner product that is one and the same thing so there is no difference in the they are the you can say kind of synonyms for each other and uh, we compute the dot product as the sum of the products of the corresponding entries of the two sequences of numbers so here you can see the inner product is uh, and it is uh, the notation for this is a dot b if somewhere you find a dot b that means a is a vector b is a vector so you can say if you, uh, a is a vector means one d array or a list of numbers and b is also a list of numbers and they are of the same size so the inner product of the two vectors a and b is a scalar function so that means you have to remember that uh, when we are uh, taking the dot product of two vectors the output is not a vector it is a scalar number a one digit number you can say like here we have uh, done so the inner product you can say it is represented as a transpose of uh, transpose of a into b is equal to a1 b1 plus a2 b2 up to an n is the number of elements in a particular vector and like uh, you can see the example over here a is a a uh, vector with a length of 3 b is also a vector with a length of 3 then how we are taking the product corresponding vector see like you have studied about the matrices then how do we apply that so in order to simplify that particular task how do we multiply that um, uh, you can say the two matrices so what we are showing over here is a transpose transpose of a so that means now we are multiplying the first row with the first column of the another matrix although these are the vectors just for the sake of simplicity just to make it easier to understand it is shown like this otherwise if you uh, you can simply write it as 1 multiplied by 1 because in vector a we have three elements 1 2 3 in the uh, second vector also we have uh, three elements 1 1 1 so we are just multiplying the corresponding elements 1 into 1 plus 2 into 1 plus 3 into 1 and if we uh, see that in terms of the matrix multiplication so uh, you can uh, take the transpose of the first vector and then multiply it with a second vector so we get the same answer so you can see from here you know, your vector a is a 3 uh, has length of 3 vector b is also of length 3 but the output of the dot product of these two vectors is a one number that is 6 so uh, this is how we compute the dot product of uh, any of the vectors so now you just can uh, tell me what is the dot product of uh, the vector that is given in this example any one of you 22. yes 22. 22 22 correct so now you know we are the, it, it is the simplest task that we do so when we we have to just multiply 1 into 6 plus 2 into 8 so 6 plus 16 is 22 now when we are talking about the dot product of the vectors then we also talk about the angles between the vectors angles between the vectors they play a very important role when we apply these uh, vectors in the machine learning so how do we do that what is the context of using these uh, angles between the vectors and what is the role they play so i'll be discussing along with the example first just uh, we try to understand what is this angle we are taking up so angle gives the basically angle gives the direction of the vector from the x axis so from the see here we uh, take these vectors from the origin see uh, you know like in the physics when we talk about vectors they are the arrows with some direction and they are in the space but when we are talking about here uh, in our uh, computer science then we take these vectors they begin from origin that is 0 0 right we don't take them in the space in the free form anywhere in the space 
we talk about vectors they start from the origin origin we always say it is 0 0 so the angles help in finding out the direction of the vector from the x axis so in what direction uh, we are talking about so how do we compute that the angle between the two vectors is given is the dot product of the two vectors divided by the uh, length of the two vectors so uh, this is cos theta is equal to a dot b divided by the length of each vector dot product of the length of two vectors now let us uh, uh, how do we compute that if we take uh, uh, okay if that i miss so you can say calculate the dot uh, how we are computing the angle is so here we take we have two vectors a and b a is you can say 5 and 1 oh, this is missed out in the slide so and another vector v is 7 and 5 we can uh, because we know what is how we are taking the dot product so because we are taking the dot product of 5 dot 7 and plus 1 dot 5 that means 5 multiplied by 7 plus 1 multiplied by 5 so that means vector a uh, has elements 5 and 1 and vector b has has elements 7 and 5 so we take the 35 plus 5 is equal to 40 now when we have to compute the magnitude of these two vectors which is depicted using the uh, these uh, these uh, vertical lines double vertical lines and uh, that we compute using underscore can somebody tell me we have studied this or not how we compute the magnitude we studied in school where uh, in schools okay so uh, can you recall that how do we do that it's uh, squares of uh, no, it root is x square plus y square is yes. it is it related to the triangular formula uh, yes ma'am pythagoras theorem is it uh, yes ma'am for triangle it is different but hmm? uh, but it's derived from the triangle formula ha like hamare uh, when we have two vectors so uh, if you can i think we did it uh, just a minute i'll take it back mm -hmm. somewhere uh, i mm. so when we took okay so let's say this thing see over here how do we compute the norm of a vector norm of a vector is basically the magnitude of that vector see this thing yes ma'am so it is calculating the basic norm that we are talking about that is the magnitude which means uh, uh, you can say it is a function which measures the magnitude of a vector it is given using this uh, this is you can see the notation for this and this is how see here it is a triangular u1 and u2 right we have two vectors and uh, if we want to compute the magnitude of this we say when we uh, join these two points from u1 to u2 this this length to so this particular vector this gives us the magnitude of the particular uh, uh, vectors that we have so that is the same we are using over here so in this formula so the dot product of two vectors divided by the magnitude of uh, dot uh, dot product of magnitudes of the two vectors so here we are taking the same thing a has 7 and 1 and b has uh, 5 uh, uh, b has 5 and 5 so when we take the square root of that, we uh, get 5 under root 2 for both. And when we compute the angle between these two vectors, we are getting this value. Clear how we are computing the dot product of two vectors? Yes, ma'am. Now we are, uh, and after that, how do we compute the angle between the vectors? So let us take the example. The well, like, only thing is, see, you have studied these concepts uh, many times, maybe in the maths when you were in the first year also. So, but the relevance of these in the current machine learning applications that we have to focus on that is more important. So, when we talk about the image classification, let us say we have two images. Uh, let's say one image is of the apple, another is of the orange, and another one is the unknown one. Now, on the basis of the information that we have the, about the apple and the orange, that means, uh, so what do we do in the machine learning algorithms? We have a training data. Let's say uh, rather than one and uh, one, uh, one image of each, we have hundreds of images of the apples, and uh, similarly, we have hundreds of images of the orange. Now, on the basis of this information, we train the model, and now we want to predict the uh, label for the new image that we have. 
so what is the uh, task predict label for likely label for the unknown image and this is uh, here we use the dot product of the vectors that is the angle between the two vectors you can say we compute so because it finds out how similar is in direction vector a is to the vector b so what uh, information this angle is providing us is see what is the similarity on the basis of the value of the angle that we see we are able to find out what is the similarity of a vector a to the vector b so and if vector a see so if it is a measure of similarity if we say cosine similarity right so if we are able to find out whether the unknown image is more closer to vector a or more closer to vector b then on the basis of that information we can tell whether the image is of the apple or image is of the orange is it clear yes are you yes. able to understand the concept that uh, where uh, in machine learning we are using the what is the role of this inner product of two vectors dot product have you have yes, you have you have you uh, studied about uh, anything you know the supervised machine learning algorithms right all of you know the supervised machine learning classification algorithms basic idea i don't want you to know the deep details because we have to learn that right so but uh, what is the role of dot product in the machine learning we will come across many applications where we are using the dot product of the two vectors so another most popular example that i'll take is when we talk about the artificial neural net so in the artificial neural networks also we use the dot product of the vectors so what is artificial neural network it is based on the uh, you can say it is uh, inspired by the neural system of the human beings and we are trying to create uh, the neurons uh, we know the human beings have the, the whole uh, human being is made up of billions and you know billions of neurons in our uh, brain we have so all these neurons they how they are related to the uh, to each other they have uh, some axons and they have some dendrites axon takes the input and then the some processing is done and then the dendron gives the output simply when you uh, let us say when you are in the uh, kitchen you if you touch something hot you have a reflex action that means some input is given to the new to the neurons that it is very hot and the sudden action that is taken by the dendrite or, uh, reflection of the dendrite that is you just move your hand from there so the such kind of behavior of the biological neurons has inspired the you can say the development of these artificial neural networks and these artificial networks in turn they are the roots for the deep learning algorithms so the neuron what is a basically a simple neuron here you can see in the diagram we have x1 x2 and y1 so x1 and x2 basically they are the two inputs or you can say uh, these inputs uh, this is one vector where we have two inputs x1 and the x2 and corresponding to this vector x1 and x2 are the two elements and w1 and w2 are the weights of the vector b so you can say the x1 and x2 is the input vector and uh, one vector with the two inputs that is x1 and x2 here you can see so we have h is equal to x1 x2 and c this is one vector then another vector is w1 w2 wn so everywhere say, in most of the machine learning algorithms you can say the uh, these two vectors uh, the, uh, you can say we are using the dot product of vectors so we should clearly understand uh, what is the relation of this thing how do we compute that so that when you study about the machine learning the task becomes easier for you so with these uh, vectors here you can see when these vectors when we take the dot product of these vectors after that in the neural network what do we do see here we have another uh, uh, you can say one more input that is given to the neuron that is the bias so when we compute this we are taking the summation of here you can see we simply did the same thing in the dot product when we were taking uh, uh, we had taken the mathematical example so x1 into w1 plus so after that when we write in the uh, formula you write i is equal to 1 to n uh, i varies from 1 to n that means this is the number of input neurons that we have inputs we are giving and wi also varies from 1 to n that means this is equal to the so each input uh, input is in a vector is associated with one weight so that's why we have the xi and wi 
and we can also write this as x transpose of x dot w as we did in the last example so either you write it like this as a summation or you write it like this as a transpose this is one and the same thing so anything in this uh, in this example that is not clear to anyone yes anyone having any query or anything that is not clear no ma'am okay i'll proceed for that uh, ma'am uh, what is weights in this matlab uh, what do you mean by weights in this w w uh, when we see uh, you can say mathematically dot product you know it is a uh, mul corresponding uh, multiplication of the elements of the two vector right yes, so here when we uh, if uh, we have to talk about weights and uh, we are uh, talking about ai application in that case basically see when we talk about x1 x2 x3 let us take the example if you can recall in the first uh, few lectures i had given one example of the flars data set right yes, in the flars data set we had four attributes that is sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width mm -hmm. so these are the four features so you can say if we have to use that particular data set and do some uh, classification using the neural network then this x1 x2 x3 so we have four features x1 x2 x3 x4 so these are the four inputs to this neural network now corresponding to that input we are saying we are using certain weights 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 means what should be the importance that should be given to feature x1 or x2 or x3 or x4 so that we are able to make the proper classification or you can say we are able to get the class we are able to get the highest classification accuracy for the unknown samples so basically okay. your weight is the importance that means the role that is being played by a particular feature for uh, making the classification as accurate as possible clear clear anyone any uh, any other query okay so let us take the example of the perceptron only so let us say we have uh, uh, i'm taking a very small application for this so a perceptron with binary inputs and outputs so it uses the weight sum and the threshold to decide whether the outcome should be yes or no so for example so you want to buy a car that is bmw but only if you have two condition one is x the price is less than dollar 50 lakhs and uh, x2 that your friend can go with you that means you have two requirements so if these two conditions are true only then you will be able to buy a car so now how to represent this information in the form of a vector so here you can see i have represented this information in the form of a vector the first vector has values 1 and 0 as we take we are taking the binary inputs our Uh, in, inputs and outputs for the sake of uh, simplicity so 1 0 means 1 represents the value of x1 and 0 represents the value of x2 so that means 1 means the ticket is uh, sorry uh, the uh, uh, just it is by mistake it's written that means the it's not the ticket it's the price price is less than this so its price is less than this that means we are, one means we can buy a car only the, we can buy a car if the price is less than this so here when we are writing 1 and 0 that means the price is less than this and but your friend cannot go with you so that's why it is assigned as zero so can you can anyone tell me the other vectors the meaning of the other vectors uh, ma'am zero one means price is greater than uh, the given price and friend can go with you one one yes. means both conditions are true and zero zero means none of the condition are true perfect so now we know how we are see, uh, based on a particular scenario the kind of application we are giving uh, giving uh, given to us how do we map those uh, that particular data into the vector notation clear this thing so similarly see here i have taken the binary uh, uh, values 
but uh, in real world you uh, you can say that are the, the uh, this uh, information is given to you like uh, again i'm taking the example of the same flower data set the four features i was talking about these are the x1 x2 that means two features and for the flower data set we have four features sepal length sepal width petal length petal width and the, the uh, in that particular data all the information or the values are given to us so we take those values in the form of you can say we can, we represent that data in the form of a vector and when we have large amount of data you can say then we can say we have a mat data in the form of a matrix in the two dimensions so as we proceed further so let's put some weights on the input as we talked about so what do you mean by uh, putting the weight the importance that we give so if you are on a budget and cost is important that means between the two features which one is more important like if we have to take a decision that means uh, uh, you can say we will assign less weight to the whether the friend is going or not but more weight to the uh, fact that we have to work within the budget so budget is more important cost is more important so we let's say we just we, this is just an assumption so when we work with the neural networks uh, and you write the code in the jupyter notebook or python or any uh, language you write so there we generate these weights randomly right so on the basis of this random initialization some weights are uh, assigned and when we say that we are iterating through the algorithm large number of steps are there then we say that it is learning that means we uh, learning means the weights are adapting and weights are adapting as per the uh, classification accuracy that we want if the you can say we give the positive weights uh, on the basis of the information whether the, how uh, how much error or the how much loss we are getting on the basis of the error we update the weights and the, in the backward direction the, uh, we call it as back propagation and then so on the basis of these updations we get new weight so learning means updating the weights in the neural network in such a way that we are able to improve the accuracy as much as possible over a period of time and this period of time in neural networks is the number of iterations we iterate through for the uh, we iterate in the whole algorithm so that's how we say uh, that learning is basically dependent upon the weights only so we are learning only through updation of weights in the neural network so here we say when we have to uh, how do we make that as a function uh, as we see uh, in the neural networks we are applying the dot product of the vectors dot product of the two vectors means x1 and x2 is one vector w1 and w2 is another vector so and uh, if we say we want to say that value should be greater than some threshold so uh, let's say like uh, we have only two options either we will buy a car and not buy a car and then uh, this means it is 50 50 probability for both and when the value is 0.5 you say that means there is no information so here we say if the value is greater than 0.5 or 0.6 or 0.7 any threshold you set only only on the basis of that you will say the whether we classify a particular object as a apple and if it is value is less than that then it is an orange similarly if uh, the value that we get for this particular function it is greater than the threshold value only then we will buy that particular object otherwise we will not buy that particular object so on the basis of that let's say we uh, assign some uh, threshold value b that is uh, uh, let's say it is 4 so we move the b to the other side and uh, you can say this is x1 into 4 plus x2 into 3 what is 4 that is basically the weight w1 that we have assigned as 4 similarly uh, what we have uh, w2 that is the weight for the x2 as we said weight of uh, w2 is equal to 3 is given to the second uh, feature that is whether the friend is going or not we are giving less importance to that and we are giving more importance to the uh, budget or the cost and if this value is greater than 0 then we buy bmw that means the perceptron will say yes uh, sorry one uh, and uh, if it is less than that then we are not going to buy then we feed these vectors into the equation obviously if the cost is greater than this and your friend cannot go then you will not make a trip right so it is 0 into 
थ्री प्लस जीरो इंटू फोर सो वी आर जस्ट कंप्यूटिंग द वैल्यूज of this equation by putting the values of all the vectors that means all the possibilities of 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 so when you put these values in all these so you can say when we put 0 0 it is less than 0 obviously the so answer will be no if the cost is cheap so if it is 1 and 0 so that means it is 0 so which is not bigger than 0 again we are not going along in any case so if it is only if it is 1 1 you can say the value will be greater than 0 that we say that the uh, uh, you can say you will buy the bmw otherwise you will not buy the bmw so when we apply this uh, neural network for the supervised learning that means for the classification of the various object this is how the decisions are made because i have shown you with a very small example to make it clear how the various steps are going on when you see when you do with the and the python you simply have a two lines you can say maximum of five lines code to implement the supervised machine learning algorithm like neural networks how the various kinds of functions are executed what kind of uh, calculations are going on we are not able to understand so for the sake of simplicity i have just taken a small example so that you are able to understand how the decisions are made by the algorithms for whether this particular image is of uh, apple banana car mobile whatever any kind of classification problem you talk about so such kind of decisions are made on the basis of this information anyone who is not able to understand this example anyone who is not clear with because we are you know, talking about the mathematical concept that we have just learned and this mathematical concept was the dot product of the vectors or the inner product of the vectors